Remember, estimating um, future outcomes is not exact science. We're just trying to make better decisions um, based on the information that we have. Um, so a lot of times it's not um, possible to assign meaningful, meaningful probabilities to the alternative outcomes. Um, and then we can use the following tools, the maxi-max, maximum, or the regret criteria. And that's based on the risk profile of the decision, decision maker. Remember, decision maker might either be um, very optimistic or risk taking or very pessimistic and risk averse, afraid of risk. So let's see um, how these three criteria work. So in this example, we have two projects, project A and B. And then there's two possible outcomes, either low or high demand. And that's what's uncertain. But we don't have any probabilities attached to it. And then there's the, the estimated profit for each scenario. So if we look first at the maxim max. Okay, so here's the same information. Maxim max is for optimistic risk, uh, risk taking investors. So they focus on the best case scenario or high demand in this case. And they would want to maximize the return and not worry too much about the risk. Obviously, they'll always worry about the risk, but we're just looking at um, risk takers in this instance. So, in this case, they will go for project B, which will return the highest profit under a high demand. That's maximax. Now, let's look at maximin. Maximin are the pessimistic risk averse investors or decision makers. They'll focus on the worst case scenario, the low demand in this case. And they would want to make the most of a bad situation. So in this case, they'll choose project A. So they'll expect the worst and then to try to maximize the return under those circumstances. So those two are fairly straightforward. Maxim Max, focus on the best possible outcome under um, the best case scenario. Maximin wants to maximize the return under the worst case scenario. So let's look at the regret criteria, or uh, you can also think of this as a um, relevant costing principle. Um, so uh, the investor wants to limit the opportunity cost of making the wrong decision. So how do we do this? This one is a bit tricky, so I'll show you the way I uh, go about thinking about it. But remember, the investor wants to limit the opportunity cost of making the wrong decision. So if we Assume the demand is going to be low. If we chose project A, would we regret this? No, we won't, because we chose the right project. But remember, we don't know what the demand is going to be. We're just playing what if. What if we chose the wrong one? So if we chose B, then we'd regret our decision. How much is the opportunity cost? Is that 40,000 that we missed out on by not choosing A? So remember the in this case, the regret or the opportunity cost is worth 40,000 rand if we choose project B. Now, what if the demand is high? Or if we then chose project B, we'd be very happy. We chose the right project. If we chose the wrong project, project A, what would the regret be? Well, the regret or the opportunity cost would be the difference between the 150 we did not get and the 120 we do get. So it's 50,000 rand. So that's the opportunity cost when we choose project A and we roll. So then we compare the two opportunity costs. So the maximum regret or opportunity cost when choosing project A is the 30,000 under high demand. And the maximum regret or opportunity cost when choosing project B is the 40,000 when there's a low demand. So therefore, to minimize the regret or opportunity cost, we have to choose project A. So also then, if we choose project A and we're right, or if there's low demand and we are right, we'll be happy. If there's high demand and we're wrong, we'll lose out on that 30,000 rand. Project B, on the other hand, if there's high demand, we'll be happy. If there's low demand, we'll lose out on 40,000. So we just want to limit the amount we could possibly forego uh, for or miss out on. It. 